what BIRAD's terms you would use to describe these calcifications and what assessment category we, we would then give for those calcifications. So this is case one. Case two, again, what are your descriptors and what's your final assessment? Case three, again, descriptors and assessment. And case four, how would you describe it and what's your assessment? Okay, so even those of us who do mammography as our specialty find calcifications troublesome sometimes. And so my task in the next 20 to 30 minutes is to give you an organized way to approach a seemingly disorganized topic. And this framework, it's essentially by rats, but it's a way of approaching calcifications that you can use on a daily basis in the reading room. So to begin with, um, there's two statements. Most breast calcifications are typically benign, meaning they are benign in a very recognizable way. And it's key to be able to recognize those calcifications and realize that you don't have to do anything else for them. Now those calcifications that are not typically benign, you then go on and analyze two pieces of information, their morphology and their distribution. And the morphology and the distribution, the words that you pick to describe those things, will guide you to your assessment category. So today we're gonna to very briefly go over BIRADS, then we'll spend some time talking about typically benign calcifications, and the rest of the time will be spent talking about the way of analyzing the rest of the calcifications, meaning the distribution and the morphology. So let's start with BIRADS. As you know, there's six categories, and you can split them up by what uh, they mean for management. So the first two categories lead you to routine screening. The third category is something we try not to use very often, but it guides you to short-term follow-up. Categories four and five lead you to biopsy. Now the difference is that for a BIRADS-5, you are 95% sure that this is a cancer. So if you do a biopsy and it turns out to be benign, you're not satisfied with that and you go on to a surgical biopsy. So that's the difference between those two. And six is for no malignancy. So we're gonna move on to typically benign calcifications. There's nine categories, which seems like a lot, but you know a lot of these. So let's start with the first one. You recognize this from MSK. These are your vascular calcifications. So they're not always this obvious. And you need to distinguish these from the linear calcifications that you would otherwise biopsy. So how do you distinguish it? There's two things. The tram track appearance of the calcification and the soft tissue wall of the vessel. And that soft tissue that you see with the vessel should track with the calcifications on all of you that you take. The next category is skin. Skin is two things going for it. It has typical locations, such as the inframammary fold along the sternum, in the axilla. And if you look at the calcifications carefully, they should be tightly clustered, and often you'll find a couple that are loose and centered. And that should usually give you enough information, but sometimes it won't. And in those cases, you bring the patient back for a diagnostic, you place a BB right on the calcifications, you prove it to yourself, making sure that the BB is right on top of those calcifications, and then you do a tangential view, and you look to see whether those calcifications triangulate to the skin. If they do, you're done. So just one more example. On your left, the calcifications are triangulating to the skin, and they're benign. On your right-hand example, you see the BB and the underlying skin, and the calcifications are within the superficial breast parenchyma, but they need additional workup because they are in the breast. So our next category is going to be radiolucent centers or eggshell. So these are lucent, but they do have uh, rims of calcification that can be continuous or discontinuous. These are benign. You can leave them alone. Moving on that same category are dystrophic calcifications, which also have a lucent center which, as you can see, can evolve over time to become more coarse. They're usually very thick, and they usually have some sort of a background of radiation or trauma or surgery. So just one more example of dystrophic calcifications. Sometimes dystrophic calcifications can be palpable. So if you can get a view like this, showing that the calcifications are on the side of her palp, and all you see are the dystrophic calcifications and the loosened centers, you're done. 
Our next category are sutural calcifications. As you can see, they look man-made, they look calcified. You don't see these often, but you do see them. Our next category are coarse or popcorn calcifications, which are usually seen with a fiber adenoma that's involuting. They're usually large, thick, coarse calcifications, which may sometimes have the soft tissue of a mass associated with them, or sometimes not. Either way, they're considered benign. The next category are secretory calcifications, which are large, rod-like calcifications, which are usually bilateral and diffuse extending towards the nipple. There is more than one type. They can be intraductal, filling the duct, as you see here, or they can be periductal, surrounding the duct. Otherwise, otherwise either, either way, they're benign. Now we're going to move on to injections. Now there's many different types of injections. I'm showing you two. These are silicone on the left. They have this cotton candy, cloudy appearance. And the paraffin injections, on the other hand, are, have these loose and centered with calcifications around them. Either way, benign. Now this last category I'm going to spend some time with. On the lateral, we see these meniscoid linear calcifications. And on the CC view, we see almost nothing. But if you look in the center, you'll see some amorphous, cloudy calcifications that are very difficult to see. These are milk of calcium. So the key to milk of calcium is knowing that that is dependent calcifications in macro or microcyst, and that they look different on the different views. So on the lateral, you'll see crescentic shaped or curvilinear calcifications. And on the CC, you will have a hard time finding them. And when you do find them, you'll see these round amorphous deposits. So in a schematic view, you'll see, again see the curvilinear appearance on the lateral and this bottom of the teacup view on the CC. And the key, again, is the change in the shape of the particles on different projections. So if you see linear calcifications on your CC, they are not milk of calcium. Only if they change shape and they are amorphous on the CC are they cal milk of calcium. All right, so that covers our nine categories of typically benign. We're going to move on to the rest. So let's start with distribution. You have five terms that you can use for distribution, and I've ordered them from benign to most suspicious. So diffuse, regional, grouped, linear, and segmental. We'll go over each of these. So diffuse calcifications are scattered throughout the breast, and they suggest a benign process. This is what it would look like. Now notice that diffuse calcifications doesn't mean that they're evenly distributed calcifications. Diffuse calcifications randomly cluster, but the key to knowing that they're diffuse is that no cluster looks very different from any other cluster. They all look very similar. So this is what it will look like on mammogram. And now we're moving on to the next query, which would be regional. Regional calcifications are sort of a catch-all. Um, they usually mean a large volume of tissue that have calcifications, but they're not quite segmental, they're not quite diffuse and they're not in a ductal distribution. Again, they suggest a benign process. So this would be the way it would look like on schematic. And this is what it would look like on mammogram. All right, our next category is grouped or clustered. This, by definition, is five or more calcification in a cubic cc of tissue. It's a neutral term. It doesn't mean suspicious or not suspicious. It's neutral. So, for example, we have two clusters here. The cluster on your left has round calcifications. The cluster on your right has coarse heterogeneous calcifications. The management is very different. The, the round calcifications can actually turn out to be a BIRADS 3, a short-term follow-up, whereas the coarse heterogeneous you would always biopsy. So the morphology is really going to dictate what's going to happen um, in, for grouped or clustered calcifications. Now moving on to our next category, which is linear. Obviously this is calcifications in a line, and it suggests deposits in a duct. These are always suspicious. So this is what it will look like in schematic. And on mammogram, again, you see these calcifications lying up, and they're actually branching. These are very suspicious. You would always biopsy these. So segmental distribution is our very last category, and it is the most suspicious distribution we have. It suggests deposits along a ductal distribution, and again, very suspicious. And as you can see here, you have calcifications that are lining up, pointing towards the nipple. On a mammogram, it would look something like this. 
Now, it doesn't really matter what sort of calcifications you have, those are highly suspicious and you would, you would definitely biopsy those. So now we're gonna move on to morphology. And let me say before we go on to the specific terms, the importance of spot compression magnification views. So try not to make a determination on the morphology of your calcifications until you see those spot mag views because you can be fooled. So for example, say we have this appearance on your normal mammogram. It looks somewhat amorphous. It would be something that I would normally biopsy. But on the spots, on the spots, again, you're seeing that all of these are actually round calcifications. That completely changes her management. So now, this, if this were her baseline, she would now be a BIRES 3, a short-term follow-up. So make sure you get those spot mags before you decide on your morphology. All right, so now we're going to talk about the five different terms. I've ordered them from benign to most suspicious, round, amorphous, coarse heterogeneous, finely amorphic, and fine linear branching. So let's start with round calcifications. These are small, round, or punctate calcifications, and they're usually benign. So this is how you would draw them. They are very clear, distinct, round. They can be different sizes. And if you saw a cluster of round calcifications, they would look like that. So they're usually benign, and so the distribution matters. If they're scattered, they're just a BIRAS 1 or 2. If they're clustered, if you are seeing them for the first time on a baseline, you can give it a BIRAS 3, which is close surveillance. If they're new, you really don't have a choice, and you still need to biopsy them. If they're in a linear or segmental distribution, you would still absolutely biopsy them because the the distribution would trump the morphology. So here's an example of round calcifications which are, in, are clustered and therefore a BIRAS 3 on a baseline. Now this is another example of round calcifications, but now they're in a linear distribution. So this would be a BIRAS 4 and you would biopsy. Okay, moving on to our next category, which is amorphous calcifications. These are small, these calcifications have very hazy borders, they're difficult to see, and they're of intermediate concern. So when I draw them for you, they look something like this. You can't really see the edges. You don't know if they're round or square or triangular because you can't see them very well. In fact, they're very hard to see on mammogram at all. So on mammography, I had to circle them so you could see them a little bit better. They're usually very difficult to see, and you just cannot see those edges. This is an exam another example of amorphous calcifications. Now, they're of intermediate concern, but on the lower end of concern. So the distribution is, again, important. If they're diffuse and scattered, technically, amorphous calcifications are still benign. But any other distribution, any other distribution warrants a biopsy. We're going to move on to the third morphology, which is coarse heterogeneous. These calcifications are irregular, conspicuous calcifications, but they're small. I'm sorry, they're big. <laughs> they're of intermediate concern. Um, and the reason they're of concern is because you can't tell if they're early coarse calcifications or if they're a cancer. And you don't want to wait to find out what they're going to turn into. So for this reason, we biopsy them. So if, in drawing them for you, I would draw them like this. There's many different shapes and sizes. You can see the edges clearly, and they're big. So in reality, they look something like this. And again, coarse heterogeneous calcifications, you do biopsy those. Now this is another example of coarse heterogeneous calcifications, which is almost going on the coarse category, but these happen to be in a segmental distribution. Um, and these actually turned out to be a high-grade DCIS. So our next category is a fine pleomorphic calcification. These are also a variable size and shape, but they're small, less than 0.5 millimeter. And they have a high probability of megalignancy. It doesn't matter what distribution you're going to biopsy these types of calcifications if you find yourself using these words to describe them. This is how I would draw them. They look a lot like the coarse heterogeneous, except they're small. And this is what they look like on mammogram. Lots of shapes and sizes, triangles, parallelograms, a lot of edges. Highly suspicious, always biopsy these. 
This is yet another example, and these are slightly segmental in distribution. So our next category is fine linear and branching. These are thin, linear, curvilinear calcifications that suggest the filling of a duct by cancer, and they have a high probability of malignancy. So they would, if I had to draw them, they would look something like this. And on a mammogram, again, you see these linear calcifications, which happen to also be in a linear distribution. They usually do travel together. Um, again, highly suspicious. And this is another example I have for you. You can see sort of the casting appearance of the calcifications within the ducts and branching. So fine linear branching calcifications, highly suspicious, always biopsy. So that actually brings us to the end of our outline and we're gonna go to our cases. So let's start out with case one. So I would describe those as a cluster of coarse calcifications. Coarse is benign, and so this would be a BIRADS one or two. Now, this next case is not, you'll notice if you compare it to the prior one, that these calcifications, although they are big, they're not quite as dull and thick. You have actually seeing different edges um, and your different shapes in these. So I would call this a cluster of coarse heterogeneous calcifications, and this would be a BIRADS four, requiring a biopsy. Our third case, this is also a cluster, but this cluster, all the calcifications, I can't see the edges very well. They're indistinct. I would classify these as amorphous. Again, a BIRADS four. And then our last case, the majority of the calcifications that you're seeing are thick, rod-like. These are secretory calcifications, BIRADS two. However, in the corner, you're also seeing a different cluster of calcifications that looks different from the others, which are pleomorphic. So pleomorphic cluster by RADS4. So always remember your radiologist, so always look to beyond the benign to find the abnormal. So again, I'm gonna leave you with this. Most of the breast calcifications that you're gonna see are benign, and they're benign in a typically benign recognizable way. Those that you can't classify as benign, you then analyze the morphology and the distribution, and the terms that you end up using for those two categories will lead you to your BIRAS assessment category.